So I'm here with Arkady Sosanov, the CEO of Tritium, and I understand you're new to the role, is that correct? I am. I'm about five months into this role. So I'm new to Tritium, not new to the industry. I've been around this industry for 12 years now, and I'm super excited to take this position and tell you more about the technology that we have. Yeah, Tritium went through a bit of a rough spot, but you just did a product unveiling. Can you tell us the name of the product that you just unveiled today? Absolutely. The product is called the TriFlex, and it takes scalability and flexibility to the next level. It is a high power product. You can output up to 640 kilowatts from a dispenser. But more importantly, our product allows you to add up to 32 dispensers on one power cabinet. The power cabinet, we call it the TriFlex Hub. Those 32 dispensers, they're feeding up to 64 vehicles simultaneously. That's why I said the horse that's a, That's a big site right there. It is, <laughs> and it's where CPOs are going. In this time of turbulence in this market, the larger CPOs, believe that they can get out ahead of everyone else and build bigger sites because that's what consumers want. They don't want to queue in line. They want to go and know that there's availability of charging infrastructure. And so we allow them to build out those number of dispensers and drive their costs down per dispenser while also making sure that consumers get a charge whenever they need it. There's always going to be a dispenser open for you. Yeah, when you do a distributed model like that, there's a lot of economies of scale that come into play when you start building bigger stations like that. So it definitely makes sense. And I think it, as the economics of uh, light duty electrification continues to drop, it's inevitable that there's going to be increased adoption. So queuing line adversion is going to be something that is going to be a hot topic, I think, in the coming years. But you were also mentioning something very intriguing to me about the ability to split the difference between the amount of capacity for inbound grid power versus um, dispensing power out to the, or DC power being dispensed out to the dispensers. Can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. So it's what Tritium has done in our previous generation products, but we've taken it further here. We've split out the AC power conversion and the DC power conversion into two separate cabinets. Now the cabinets are connected and there's a bar, a bus bar running between them, but AC power conversion and DC power conversion are, are separate modules. The reason is because you can spec the exact grid capacity you have. So let's say you have 800 kilowatts of grid capacity. You can put in 800 kilowatts of AC power modules. But next to that, you can put in 1.6 megawatts of DC power modules. So what you're doing there is two things. One, you are banking on the fact that not every vehicle shows up at the same time and not every vehicle pulls high power all at the same time. So you may never need the 1.6 megawatts. You may actually be okay with the 800 kilowatts. But when vehicles do show up with higher power, when that vehicle mix changes, instead of upgrading your utility infrastructure, you just feed in battery storage to the DC power modules. You don't need a separate inverter. You just feed in battery storage to the DC power modules to make up that gap between the 800 kilowatts and the 1.6 megawatts you're trying to deliver to vehicles. To get over the peak curve portions of the charging cycles on any given day for that specific station, you would add a uh, augmented battery uh, in order to alleviate the uh, oversubscription during those times. Sound about right? And other DC power sources. So I've seen linear generators. I've seen solar. This company was born out of the Outback in Australia. We're now an American company. We were born out of the Outback. And when you go and drive through the Outback, you can actually see dozens and dozens of our installations with solar, with battery storage, feeding our DC fast chargers. And we've brought that to the US because that's where operating costs are going. That's where we're driving down operating costs and allowing our CPOs to better serve customers. Yeah, it's a bright future, and Tritium had a bit of a rough spot recently, but one thing that uh, was in the news just this past week is the opening of the flagship uh, Logan Airport Gigahub by BP Pulse, which uh, Tritium was pretty front and center in. And I'm assuming that's uh, one of the customers that would be at least evaluating this new technology. Is there any other areas where you think this uh, we might see this soon in the... Uh, I don't know, 2025, maybe 2026? Yeah, Tritium did go through a rough patch. Tritium was one of the leaders in EV DC fast charging globally. We had close to 30% market share in Europe and the UK, 20% market share in the US. I did not know that, wow. And about 80% market share in Australia and New Zealand, makes sense. But we flew too close to the sun. That's the fact of the, of the matter. And when the NEVI program, when IRA didn't pan out to, to the levels that folks expected, we got caught just ahead of our skis. Now, the company is back 
We've, I've hired over 100 people just in the last four months. We now are a staff of 300, and we are selling back to those customers globally. And what's great is because the market itself took a pause over the last year, we haven't really lost market share. We still have that high market share in those markets that we talked about. Now, customers like BP Pulse have stuck with us and are continuing to, to stick with us going forward. That GigaHub launch near the Logan Airport in Boston, in my backyard actually, is one great example. And by the time your viewers see this video, they'll probably hear about another GigaHub going live at LAX. LAX, yeah. These are fantastic sites. Each of them have 16 tritium charge ports per site. And customers, as I mentioned, like CPOs like BP Pulse, are just going larger and larger and larger because, again, the name of the game here is not about peak power out of one charger. It's about having lots and lots of dispensers available for drivers. As soon as they show up, there is no wait, no queue. Yeah, one of the vibes I'm picking up here at ACD in 2025 is I don't get any indication of people pulling back on electrification or that it might dissipate and the lack of the NEVI program is going to deflate the uh, EV bubble. On the contrary, I only see adoption increasing. The name of the game recently seems to be TCO and fleet operators. And although the light duty space might not be picking up as fast as we were expecting, fleet operators definitely seem to have their eye on electrification. And so I'm assuming a fleet use case for this is going to be uh, pretty common as well. I don't know if you sell directly to individual fleet operators or do they have to go through a integrator? We typically sell through partners in the fleet segment. Although if a fleet wants to come to us and buy directly, we're more than happy to. But typically what a fleet wants is a package service option, package installation, package fleet management software, and package hardware all together. In those cases, we're more than happy to work with our reseller partners and value added distributors. And there are plenty of them in the, on the floor today. Now, going back to what, we, what you mentioned earlier, that the segment took a little bit of a pause. Yes, but as you saw, EV adoption continues to climb. The market expected, with all of these incentives going away and the consternation at the federal level, that EV adoption will start to tick downwards. It hasn't. It's continued to rise quarter over quarter. And what these charge point operators have realized is they took about a year-long pause on their infrastructure planning and deployment, and now they're starting to have to catch up. And if you take a pause for a year on infrastructure, you're well behind because that's the planning process. 18 months, right. Takes 18 months. So now there's, there's a, 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 a desire to go out and go as quickly as possible, getting grid capacity, getting utility infrastructure, getting chargers, because adoption keeps ticking up and you don't want to be behind that curve. Yeah, I don't know if you're big, seeing the same thing I am. I feel as though 2025 might very well be the year of most DC fast charger implementations in the United States ever right now is what it seems like. There is so much going on. So anyway, congratulations on the launch of your new product, sir. Thank you, Walter. Right. Yeah.